Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, and you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at why we have a seven-day week. Two of the earliest known civilizations to use a seven-day week were the Babylonians and the Jews. The Babylonians marked time with lunar months, and it is thought by many scholars that this was why they chose a seven-day week, though direct evidence of lunar months being why they declared a seven-day week is scant. That said, each lunar month was made up of several different cycles. On the first day, the first visible crescent appeared. On approximately the seventh day, the waxing half-moon could be seen. On approximately the 14th, the full moon, and on approximately the 21st, the waning half moon, and on approximately the 28th, the last visible crescent. As you can see, each notable cycle is made up of about seven days, hence the seven day week. You'll notice I use the word approximately a lot in there. This is because the moon phases don't line up perfectly with this schedule. As such, as far back as the 6th century BC, which incidentally is also around the time the Jews were captives in Babylon, the Babylonians would sometimes have three seven-day weeks followed by an eight to nine-day week, presumably to resynchronize the start and end of the weeks to match the phases of the moon. In their normal seven-day week, the Babylonians held the seventh day of each week as holy, much like the Jews did and still do. However, the Babylonians also held the day to be unlucky. Thus, similar to the Jews, but for a different reason, the unluckiness of the day, the seventh day had restrictions on certain activities to avoid dire consequences. The final seventh day of the month for the Babylonians was the day of rest and worship. The ancient Romans during the Republic did not use a seven-day week, but rather went with eight days. One eighth day of every week was set aside as a shopping day where people would buy and sell things, particularly buying food supplies for the following week. Rather than labeling the days of the week with actual names, at this time the Romans labeled them with letters, A to H. You might think from this that H was always the shopping day, but this isn't correct. You see, the calendar year did not divide evenly by eight. Thus, the day of the week that was the day to go shopping changed every year, but they still often referred to a particular day based on its proximity to the shopping day. For reasons not entirely clear, within a century after the introduction of the Julian calendar in 46 BC, the eight-day week started to diminish in popularity in favor of the seven-day week. The full switch was not sudden, happening over centuries. For a time, as the seven-day week grew in popularity, both the seven- and eight-day weeks were used in Rome simultaneously. Finally, after the popularity of the eight-day week diminished almost completely, Constantine, the first Christian Roman emperor, made the seven-day week official in AD 321. Due to the influence of both Rome and Christianity, this has stuck in most regions of the world ever since. Bonus fact. For a very brief time in France and the USSR, the seven-day week was abandoned. The French abandoned the seven-day week in favor of a ten-day week beginning in 1793 thanks to the French Republican calendar developed at this time. This was abandoned nine years later when the Roman Catholic Church was re-established in France. The official switch back to the seven-day week happened on April the 18th, 1802, Easter Sunday. Starting in 1929, the USSR abandoned the seven-day week in favor either of first a five-day week and then a six-day week. This was abandoned, and the seven-day week was re-established in 1940. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one, and thank you for watching.